you know, ever since like I filled in that survey, I'm feeling like I I, I gave it a bit of thought, and I'm like, oh, oh that, call yourself an illustrator, Emily. Go on, <laughs> give yourself the title. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome back to the Make Art, Don't Starve podcast. I'm your host, Kelsey. And I'm your other host, Al. And today we are joined by Emily, or Art with M. Hi, Hi. Emily. Uh, hello. Uh, it's nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being here. We're so excited to talk to you. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, so my name's Emily, obviously. Uh, I go by Art with M online quite a lot. I make YouTube videos, I show lots of arty process on there, I'm currently in my, yes I was starting uni in one day for my final year of illustration, uh, I have an Instagram, keep that up to date with all the art I've made and have an Etsy shop and that's about it, <laughs> that's me. Amazing. I've been loving your yeah. videos. They're, they're so cute, like the just like the storybook like whimsical element of your art is just amazing and you're amazing. so talented and we're just like we were fangirling before we started <laughs> recording this episode just because like it's so lovely to meet you and talk to you so i saw on your instagram story that you did a market for the first time how did that go oh, yeah. yeah i did my first art market it was nerve-wracking i was like preparing for it getting like really stressed about it panicking making sure oh, like no. my um you know it looked nice it was for it was like the uni freshers fair thing so it wasn't like a big massive art market would just ease me into it but my friend went with me so because I'm just so nervous and awkward around people like I don't know how to like just say hello so but she's like the complete opposite so like having her with me it was much nicer yeah awesome it's I bet it's nice just to have someone there to like that in between time where it's kind of awkward where no one's at your booth and what's so awkward I have never done an art market but when you're at those kinds of like situations I did in school a lot and people would like walk by and kind of look at your table, but not stop. And there'd be that weird moment of like staring them down. Yeah. It's it's nice to have someone there that you can like talk to and be like, I'm totally normal. This is totally fine. There's like that awkward moment where they're standing and they're looking and they're getting the purse out and you think, oh, is this a sale? Is this a sale? I don't know. Do I, do I approach? It's yeah, because like I know like when I'm at tables and like the person who's like, at like selling stuff if they're like really overbearing i get really uncomfortable and i feel super pressure to buy something i feel really bad if i don't oh, no. so like i'm all, like whenever i'm in that situation i'm always like do i say anything do i not say anything <laughs> do i acknowledge it do i pretend i'm busy so that yeah it's awkward yeah. are you planning on doing any more yeah I've, I've applied for one i don't know if i'll get it hoping i'll get it but yeah i really want to do more because it was so fun and Yay. It's just nice to see people in person, like, enjoying your art. Because, yeah. you know, online, you can't really see, like, the reactions. Yeah, that's oh, so exciting. <laughs> that is really exciting. Okay, so you mentioned that you had an extroverted friend with you and that, like, you're kind of an introverted person. I feel the same way. How did you sort of decide to start a YouTube channel, which is, like, kind of seen as this, like, very extroverted activity as someone who is really introverted? Like, what, like, drove you to kind of launch your channel? I'm curious. Well, you've you got to take you back six years <laughs> to when I was, um, I think I, I might have just turned 15. So I was in what's called like year 10 here in high school. Um, it was mm -hmm. summer holidays and I just remember being really bored and I loved YouTube and I loved, I don't, and I, I knew I definitely watched art videos, but I wasn't, it wasn't like the main thing that I watched, but I knew I wanted to make a YouTube video, but I, I had no idea what to make it of. And I thought, well, what, what are my skills right now? Um, I guess I'm all right at drawing, so I just thought, well my brother actually, I was saying oh, I really want to make a YouTube video because I was bored and he was like, why didn't you just make one about art? And I was like, well you know what, go on then, I will. <laughs> and I remember yeah. the setup, it was dodgy. I had my mum's old iPad, it was two chairs, like two dining room chairs, and um, like a bit of wood in between with um, an iPad balanced on top, pointing down to the sketchbook <laughs> on the floor. That. <laughs> That's what I, I used to film the videos on. Uh, and yeah, just made one, tried to do some sort of a voiceover. I mean, it is still up on my channel, but it's the cringiest thing known to man. Uh, but yeah. I kind of don't want to take it down because... I oh, did I take it down? I might have taken it down a few months ago, I can't remember, but I don't know. I, it was up for a long time but, before I took it down. But yeah, it's just really awkward, but I thought it's nice for people to see the journey. I think I still have my first video up. Al, do you have, do you have your first video up still? Yeah, I do. But my first few videos were 
Like, I wasn't in them. It was... Because I wasn't going to put my face in for a while. And so it was, like, just weird. Like, like literally, I think one doesn't have any sound at all. It's just, like, a silent <laughs> digital speed paint. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't show my face yeah. for ages. I mean, I still... I don't really show that much now because I just... I get really mm. awkward as soon as... Like, if it's my hands in front of the camera, fine. No problem. But it's my face in front of the camera. I'm just... like I just go so stiff. And I just... It's like I can't <laughs> function. So, yeah, I don't show my face that often. I can't even remember the first time I showed my face. It took a fair few years. It's hard. Once you're used to the, the comfort of, like, not having your face on camera, like, the first time doing it is really, like, hard. I it's had, like a vulnerable kind of feeling. Yeah. It is. I had a lot of people... I think the first time I, like, kind of showed myself... People who had followed me on Instagram for a really long time were like, that's not what I thought you'd look like. Like, that's not your personality that I thought you'd have. And I was spiraling for days. Like, who am I? Like, what? What? Do, wh why? It's it's hard to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. I do want to get better for at sure. it because I, I watch all the videos I watch are more like kind of vlog sort of styles mm -hmm. where they'll show a lot more of the life alongside art. But like, I'm kind of like, I show 1% life. 99% art but I want to try and start showing a little bit more life but that requires yeah. more showing off the face so I'm slowly trying to do that more and more often yeah, yeah. one thing that I found that kind of helps me if I'm feeling like in that kind of like vulnerable like feeling where I don't like really want to show my face and I'm kind of like in a mood or something it's actually like holding the camera like not having it on a tripod just like holding it that for some reason just like makes it feel like more intimate and more personal like I'm talking to like a friend or something more and that kind of helps but I actually love your video where you went on holiday i think they needed like all of those yeah. like, little collages with the boats i still oh, remember those collages yeah. they were so cute um yeah and i got the, into those i love yeah. those and like the um like the little like shots that you did of like the the wharf and everything i thought that was really cute um so yeah, i would yeah. love to see those videos personally but that's just me that's a go slowly start including in more life because <laughs> it's just nice for people to see yeah like, it's like it lets them connect to you more if you show your face Bit more personality yeah so exactly because i know sure. when i do show my face people enjoy and say oh it's nice to see who's like behind the art yeah i agree with that it, it is nice to to like see like co connect you know the name with the face and stuff mm -hmm. so you've been on youtube for six ish years yeah and going back to some of your older videos and like when you were on portrait artists artists of the year you did a lot of like realism and portraiture and now your style has definitely evolved at least in what you're putting on youtube where it is that very whimsical storybook um, quality to it. Is there a reason that your style has changed or have you just kind of been following impulse? Is there an outside factor? I feel with the portraits, I was doing it because mainly for college, like it was for fine art. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I got quite good at them. So I carried on doing them just because it's what I knew and it's what I was comfortable right. with. And I knew, you know, I, I was you know, pretty decent at them. So I thought, oh, people like seeing this. I'll keep doing it, why not? Um, but then, Oh, I did what's called like a foundation year, um, which is like a, the middle ground between college and uni. So I did it when I was 19. And basically it's a year where you do every single arts like style under the sun. You do graphic design, photography, like fashion, like every single thing. So you come out of it having tried so many different things. So it's like, wow, I was doing it, realized, oh wow, illustration is really definitely the one I wanted to do because I did it not really knowing if I wanted to do fine art or illustration realized mm, do I want to paint realistic portraits all the time maybe not I quite like children's books um, yeah so yeah that was a main influence and then it was just like seeing people on Instagram um, really loving their styles and yeah going to uni doing illustration really forces you to do different things because the projects are so out of your comfort zone you're just forced to yeah yeah speaking of your projects i those are some of your, my favorite videos when you're doing school projects because it's so fun to see you do something that is not like exactly what i would expect from you like the the one like the poster you had to do for the the nuns oh yeah that was, that was such a yeah. fun video because it was so like unique and interesting and i i really enjoyed seeing like your thought process any process video like from beginning like con con conceptualizing to completing very fun very cool yeah but yeah that's an interesting like thought on like i didn't know that that's how like your schooling worked the foundation year so that's that's interesting to know yeah well you don't have yeah, to do as, them it... us americans we're just yeah. like kind of in the dark about how uk education works oh it goes uh so it's high school is until you're 18 yeah. no 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 
wrong. High school is until you're 16, which I think in, is different in America. Don't you go to your 18? Yeah, it's, it's 18. So yeah. high school America, yeah. is to 16, you go from year 7 to year 11 in high school, and it goes college, which is just two years where you do A levels for, so that's 17, 18, and then you can just go straight to uni. When well, you don't have to do uni, you can do nothing, but you can go straight to uni at 18, or you can do a foundation year, which is kind of just a just do a gap in between college and uni if you feel like you need it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how it works. You talked about a little bit how like your those prompts and stuff where you try new things and how like the foundation you played a really big part in like your overall evolution. I'm kind of interested in like where you get your inspiration to do all of the really cool stuff that you do or like like where you really draw a lot of your inspiration from like where you look to to get inspired maybe you're not feeling super motivated to make stuff. Well, I mean, I don't know. So. <laughs> uh, around <laughs> me, I like looking at. I mean, a lot of it is just nature. I get, I get a massive burst of energy whenever I go on holiday. I just take so many pictures of plants. I went to this place called it's called the Eden Project, and it's this massive like dome filled with like kind of rainforest plants and stuff. Ooh, and I got so yeah. much inspiration from that. Um, so that's kind of been fueling the past like few months of um, artwork. Just that one trip. Pinterest, I used to use Pinterest a lot more than I do now. I used to use it kind of for most things, but I'm trying to use more of my own reference pictures now. But it's kind of hard when, you know, you can't get a picture of everything yourself. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but a lot of it is just from seeing things out in the wild. And then just also Instagram. I'm always scrolling and saving things and I'll just look back through my saves whenever I'm feeling uninspired just to see what other people have done. And I like try and take a few bits and bobs and try and squish them together to make my own thing. But yeah, it just kind of pops into my head a lot of the time. Somehow just pop and then I just paint yeah. it. <laughs> I feel the same way about taking my own reference pictures. Like I've been dabbling with that more recently because every Saturday there's a farmer's market at the end of my block. And it's like right next to my apartment, there's this awesome farmer's market. And they have all of this fresh produce. And like right now here in California, heirloom tomatoes are still in season and apples are coming more into season two. And like because of the climate, there are so many fresh flowers and stuff all the time. And it's been really fun just like actually just like splurging a little bit, and like getting fresh flowers like every Saturday and like just like that experience of like seeing all of the cool like like shapes of like the unique produce that people grow here and like the I don't know there's like this there are these cherry tomatoes that are like yellow and they're like little ovals instead of just like the normal like kind of squat cherry tomatoes and it's been so cool just like making still lifes from those and like kind of photographing it in like the bright sunlight and like playing with like the really interestingly like, dappled shadows you can get when you introduce like potted plants and stuff to that too so I have a lot of fun taking my own reference pictures but I definitely agree like it's really frustrating when you can't take a picture of everything or like you know you want a picture that's super specific but you can't find it online and that can be a little bit Oh, sometimes you can search your free reference pictures for just hours trying to find a specific angle of like like an animal or like, and it's, you just yeah. can't find it you just have to give up eventually because you're just never going to find it yeah yeah for sure and i, I, I feel you about pinterest yeah like i was really reliant on pinterest for a long time but pinterest has like it doesn't do great things all the time so i've been really trying to yeah like use my own reference photos but one thing that's really hard is like I like to do a lot of people and like I don't want to just draw myself every time like I don't have friends to like make a pose for me <laughs> and so if I want like a like a pose or like a, f a face reference or something I have to do it myself and then everything ends up looking like me and I don't want to just draw me over and over and over again it's rough but, oh my God, wait you know, I didn't know you had that problem work. if you want if you want me to take pictures for you I'll do it like I swear <laughs> to God like yeah <laughs> roll into I'm, my DMs yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I text my friends and I'm like, take a picture of yourself in this exact position. <laughs> so Emily, when you're done with university, what are your big, like, what is your not, I mean, I don't want to accidentally give you a crisis here if you <laughs> haven't figured it out, but if you have any ideas, do you have any like next steps in terms of art, your art career or any like goals in that sense? Um, I feel like I've got a pretty good thing going with like YouTube, but it's not, yeah. like, it's not really a hundred percent reliable because sometimes you can just not get the views you want to get so I want to keep it up with the YouTube just see how that goes just see if I can kind of grow it to be any bigger because it's it's pretty slow at the moment just grow I mean it's growing but you know not as quick as it used to but that's fine by me I right. don't really mind because I just do it for fun mainly but when uni finishes I gotta start thinking about you know buying food well, I'm gonna think about buying food now but no more student loan so I need to seriously think about how I'm going to um you know make money so 
YouTube, I'm going to try. It's like basically just spreading myself into as many different things as possible is, is what uni says a lot. Like if you want to go freelance, dip your toes in lots of things so you've got multiple income revenues. Then yeah. you've got like lots to rely on. So I'm thinking YouTube, um, my Etsy shop, and then going to art markets. And then like the main thing that I really want to do, but it you got to, you know, I think it takes quite a while to build it up, is starting to get like freelance jobs from clients and working for companies and things like that but yeah it takes quite probably quite a few I don't know maybe years to like build up that reputation for yourself so right. like I recently made a website which is a start um because then you can like send companies your website and it's just a bit more professional like an online portfolio but yeah when uni finishes I'm just going to really try and just be like freelance and try and get jobs from people and just try and make money from all the different platforms that I can YouTube, Betsy, um, I'd like to live stream, um, maybe start a Patreon I don't know it seems like a lot of work. <laughs> um, Patreon? Yeah Patreon um, is a lot of work. Well I mean <laughs> I it's think flexible. Would do great, though. It's flexible like you can set rewards to be whatever you want it to be so like I don't ship anything out on my Patreon, I just do like like a little newsletter, like an audio newsletter, and sometimes I do like extra videos. Or you can also do like early access of your existing videos if you wanted to, like just make them like a day or so early. And if you're working with brands and stuff, you're like already doing that because they have to get approved in advance. So it's like kind of a no brainer if that's already happening. But yeah, so you do end up, so you do intend to like keep doing YouTube after graduation. Do you kind of want to be, you mentioned that you want your channel to keep growing and stuff. Is like envisioning yourself as like a kind of like an art, youtuber a thing that you're interested in like do you want to do youtube full time or would you prefer to kind of balance it with other stuff i want it to be like balance i feel like for me obviously like i really enjoy youtube and i don't ever want to stop uh, but for me uh like arts the main thing of making art is like the the main thing that makes me the most happy um yeah so that's I feel, I think that's always going to be the main priority just to keep making art whether that be for YouTube videos or for like clients and stuff uh, I don't know but I, I, I do like people trying to think of is that like you know like Furry Little Peach I think she's got, got yeah. pretty good <laughs> um, yeah. with um, her kind of because she does seem to do like loads of client works but then also makes pretty regular YouTube videos and has a pretty big audience trying to just keep going with what I'm doing yeah yeah I think you're definitely on the right like track like mentioning for a little peach like she i she is definitely like career goals in that terms of like being a local artist and being known for art and being contacted by like these huge companies and working with them and like getting to just make videos about that like that is like such a dream so i totally see why like you reference her because that would be that would be really nice but yeah i can see are you trying to kind of get any local connections right now or do you plan on like moving later to where that might not be worth it um I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've not like reached out to anyone yet because I don't want to, mm -hmm. well, I'm worried. Like it, I mean, if I do get a job, it'd be amazing, but I don't want to get a job in the middle of uni and then be like, oh, I mm. don't have the time. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I'm kind of like building up a list of people who I want to email when uni finishes. Um, yeah. And it's, the plan is to just email like mad, <laughs> just send emails like, yeah. to everyone under the sun and just hope that someone emails me back eventually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's smart. I'm sure with your portfolio, you got no issues. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, get emails I'm, back. I'm, like, not worried. I'm, like, yeah, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that. and, like, I don't know. I, I talk about this a lot, but, like, I think you'd be really surprised at how fast your life could, like, change. Like, your YouTube channel could like, grow out of nowhere. And, like, I will I will definitely attest to how crazy that yeah. can be sometimes. I mean, yours, yours, yours grew so quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, yours did. <laughs> it was super overwhelming. It was, it was amazing, obviously, right? But, like when that happens it can be like overwhelming in like a like an anxiety way it's like a, oh my god mm. like is this gonna stop like what's gonna happen and then like trying to like turn that like huge growth spurt and something sustainable can can be quite a bit of work but like yeah i mean obviously i want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing because i love watching your content but but yeah it can be it can be a lot so the main thing that we really wanted to talk about in this episode was feeling imposter syndrome and like that kind of general feeling of like undervaluing yourself and even undercharging sometimes for your own work. And speaking of like growing fast or like being a presence on YouTube, sometimes it can feel, sometimes you can feel like an imposter. Um, like you don't really belong in this space. Like this audience that you have isn't really like, you don't really deserve it. Do you ever feel like that? Or like with your own channel and your Instagram following and like sort of your own skills as an illustrator, do you ever feel like maybe you don't belong or something? I don't know if I get that 
like specific form of um, imposter syndrome because I like I don't obviously I, I know I've got like a fair few followers and like, subscribers, but because it's been you know it's been across spread across six years, so it's been such a slow growth that it's always kind of felt like oh, I mean I've been doing this for six years, yeah, you know <laughs> I'm happy with what I've achieved in that time. Yeah, and it's more like the imposter syndrome comes from more like not feeling like I'm, I'm good enough at art like I mean I, it kind of comes and goes in like waves like I'll be fine and be really happy with my art for like a few months and then all of a sudden I'll do one piece which I really hate and then I just kind of get a bit stuck and I'm making a piece and nothing's really turning the way I want it and then instantly my brain's just like oh yeah it's because you're rubbish and you can't do art and it's like oh no there's that thought again I've got to try and figure out how to get rid of that and yeah that's the main form of imposter syndrome is seeing other people's work am I ever going to be like good enough to be like a full-on like professional um illustrator and um, that's kind of the main like form that it comes in yeah I I totally feel like I fully agree like that's it's a really and it's a really weird thing to like explain to because like I'll say sometimes like oh I don't like what I did and but at the same time I know logically like yeah I have skill um, because like I wouldn't I wouldn't really be pursuing this if I didn't think I had skill but there are times where you're like do I though do I have the <laughs> skill or did I have I been lying to myself and is everyone else just like following me out of pity and people are just complimenting me because like they feel bad like it's this really weird thing because like there's all this evidence to prove that like no you're you're fine you've got it but there's still that weird feeling of like like I don't know where it comes from I don't know why because I don't believe it but sometimes I just get that weird feeling of like no this sucks you suck you can never get better <laughs> You should just stop. It's just like, like, a I, like I yeah. of like my all the art I've made so far was just happened by accident and you you're not actually yes. you can't actually do it. It just all somehow you just got really lucky and made all this art and then it's gone. Your luck's gone. You tough tough luck. You won't be able to make nice art again because you made one yeah. bad piece and it's like Emily just actually calm down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like I do it's one a- bad thing and it's like well. I guess you were a one-hit wonder with that one piece that you liked, and you'll never reach that level again. Good luck, sweetie. Yeah. Yeah, I look back at a lot of my old work, and I'm like, yeah, that was all just a, that was a fluke. That wasn't me. Like, I yeah. didn't do it. And I don't know, like, Emily, a question that I do have is, so when I feel like that sometimes, I feel a lot, like, like, it affects what I put in my videos. Not as in I can't share, like, my failures, but people will ask me for advice on certain subjects, or like I and I feel like I can't give any thoughts on that like it'll restrict me a lot in what I feel I can talk about what advice I feel I can give do you ever notice that that imposter syndrome affects like the art you put in your videos or what you talk about yeah I know when I'm feeling like low the low art wise that I just well first of all I just struggle to make them because I just can't make the videos because the videos are the art so I'm not happy with the art the video is not going to get made and I remember so many times it's I guess it still kind of happens but it's not I'm not as bad as I used to be I try to be a little bit more forgiving now but I remember I suppose like this time last year when I started like doing all like the week of arts and being pretty regular with the week of arts it got to the point where I got so specific with what I would include like I couldn't like I was like oh I can't include that sketch it's not good enough I can't include that because it's not f- finished I can only only include that because I wasn't really happy with the color palette so I'd, I'd worked so hard all week trying to make art to put in this video And I'd only include like half of it because I didn't really like the way the other things turned out. And I get so stressed about Mm. it because I'm like, oh, I've not got enough content to fill this video. I can't make it, I can't stretch it to be like 25 minutes. And I just think, right, that's it. I'm just not going to make the video even though I put all that work in. I had a serious chat to myself and I was like, "Um, you can't carry on with this. (laughs) It's not, (laughs) it's not um, healthy to have this mind, like, you know, mind frame. So I, I am a bit better at it now, but I do still get sucked into you know this video is nowhere near good enough to post because the art in it is mediocre and no one's gonna like it so you mentioned having that serious chat with yourself and i feel like that is like the main way is at one point every artist has to sit down with themselves and be like (laughs) cut like cut it out like stop (laughs) being stupid do you besides that though when you're dealing with those feelings as they come or when you're editing a video and you're being picky about what you want to put in are as you're getting better as you're working with this are is there anything specific that you're doing to work on that and to cope with those feelings um I guess, oh, I don't, oh, I don't quite know. Um, it, it's more like, a tough question. Yeah, it's more like the people around me, because um, I can get in such a, a funk about my art where I'm like, oh, I really don't like it. And then uh, like my boyfriend will look at it and he'll be like, what are you on about? It looks good. 
that's really nice for a video that people will love to see that you filmed it it looks good you've already edited it pop, pop it in the video and I'm like oh I'm not sure and it's just having that kind of reassurance from someone else whether it's uh, like my parents to help me out a lot and like um yeah my boyfriend is the main sort of person who will slap me into gear and be like listen get that in the video yeah. because you put the effort in and it looks good that's the main thing just having like just other eyes on it helps and just let you know that you yeah. know what it is actually all right and you you know have like also just like taking the time step away from it and then with fresh eyes you might like love it again i remember um i don't know how many videos ago now was it like last month maybe i did this painting gouache painting of like this little tiny ladybird in amongst all these wiggly plants and at the time i hated it and i was like, i'm not i'm just not going to include it in the video but now i look back at it and it's honestly one of my favorite things i've ever painted and it's just crazy wow. how like that mindset can change just from yeah, looking yeah, at it a few yeah. days later. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I know what piece you're talking about. I love that piece. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, that's that's interesting. I Because I'll do that thing where like you've just been staring at it for so long that you don't even know what it looks like anymore because all you can see are the flaws or like the things that you don't like. You know the process behind it. And I'll like just, I'll be like, okay, just leave it. And I'll either like from an hour to like overnight to like a week. And it's just, a, you see it in a whole new way. Like, you're, you're no longer, you yeah. forget, like, the l weird little flaws. And it's so much easier to see it, like, objectively. So that's that's good advice to, like, just take that time away. Yeah. Fresh eyes always help. So let's talk also about undercharging yourself as an artist. Because uh, that's a huge thing that I think a lot of artists do. And I, it definitely, I think, stems from, you know, society telling artists that they're not worth anything. But also that imposter syndrome. Feeling like, well, I'm not a real artist. Uh, that's that can be a, a difficult thing to deal with. So you mentioned actually, and we sent you a survey, and we asked you to yeah. answer a few questions. And you mentioned that you feel hesitant to give yourself the title of illustrator. Can you explain like why? Yeah, um, I suppose because I've not finished like uni yet. I still like I'm still in education. Um, I've still gotcha. got a whole of a year of you know learning to do. I feel a bit cheeky saying, "Yeah, I'm an illustrator." I just feel like because it's not like my full time job, and you know at the moment. I'm like obviously I'm student loan helps me out a lot many parents help me out a lot so it doesn't feel like my money is fully coming from art yet so it feels a bit weird saying I am an illustrator even though I, I do make money from it it's not like my main source of income one day maybe when uni finishes I'll, I'll call myself a, a full you know I'm, I'm an illustrator <laughs> yeah that's fair that's fair yeah but, you know ever since like I filled in that survey I'm feeling like I, I I gave it a bit of thought and I'm like oh, oh there, call yourself an illustrator Emily go on <laughs> give yourself the title because like I worked hard over summer and I was really happy with the money I made over summer and I'm like Emily you know you make art and you make money from the art therefore you are an artist you can call yourself that no one has a rule there's no like set rule no one's there saying who can or cannot be if you want to be call yourself an artist call yourself an artist so I'm an illustrator. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! I love that. Yeah, I definitely think, I mean, after you said that, I was going to be like, actually, no, you should call yourself an illustrator. <laughs> but if you're going to say that, yeah, I think you should. Because, you know, even, like, if someone, like, if, I think people would hire you right now. Like, you're not finished with school, and I know you said you want to take on a job, but I feel like there would be plenty of people who would hire you for work right now. And I think, like, you're, you're at the skill level, you have, like, a lot of knowledge, um, and you know how to market yourself. And I think, I think you could totally call yourself illustrator and I don't think anyone would argue <laughs> with you about it. Yeah. And also like your YouTube videos, like literally you making art, like if that's not making you money from your art, like what is, you know what I mean? I don't think yeah. art necessarily has to be like an exchange of goods and services in like the strict, like kind of capitalist sense. Like, if you're like making art and sharing that with the world, they don't have to like exchange physical goods in order to like really call yourself that at least, at least in my opinion. Um, my content centers around like art and business all the time. Like I still consider myself an artist, even though I'm not like selling my art right now. Mm. Um, and I think like it's a it's a difficult definition, especially now because like everything is so digital. It can be like kind of weird to navigate that world, especially when so many people still think that like you have to sell your work in galleries and like you know really go out there in order to call yourself an artist, which I don't think that's necessarily true. But yeah, so about kind of undercharging. In that same line of thought, it can be difficult to really like kind of put a fair price on your work when you don't feel necessarily comfortable labeling yourself as an artist. Have you ever had like anyone personally 
like kind of have an issue with your prices, like talk you down? Have you ever felt like kind of uncomfortable charging a fair rate like that you know that you should be worth? I guess it's not so much from other people, it's more from me, especially mm-hmm. when I started. Like I remember I think it was might have been, was it last no, it was two summers ago. I really got into pet portraits, um, just like on Etsy, you know, drawing painting people's pets. Um and I remember yeah. I used to charge and I can't believe I did this because I, I can't, I just, it's ridiculous how little I charge. I charge £20, I'm like, yeah, I think it was £20 for a pet portrait. And me to bear in mind, Etsy takes wow. 10% and I was spending six hours on them. Maybe some five hours, yeah. five hours on them. Um, looking back at that now, I'm like, oh my God, how did I do that to myself? I, not yeah. worth it. No, okay, it's not even like I was enjoying it. Okay, it got quite, <laughs> quite boring after a bit. A lot of yeah. cats look quite similar. Um, it was just... <laughs> Yeah, the cats, the dogs were more exciting than the cats because just, I don't know, I just seemed to get very similar looking cats. Anyway, um, so I had a, you know, I had to talk to myself again and I was just saying, right, I needed to like figure out how to actually price it. So I started thinking, right, how how many hours am I actually spending on this and what, how many, how much money do I want to pay myself per hour? Like kind of thinking it as if it was like a proper job. Let's say I want to get... Ten pound an hour, which is you know minimum wage um, here in well here in England. Uh, so then it was like right, these pet portraits take me about five hours. Let's charge fifty pound for them. That's kind of the thinking behind them. So I mean, still fifty pound. I mean, it's minimum wage fifty pound, but still I was charging a lot more. And um, yeah, better than twenty. Yeah, I mean, you guys still think about Etsy's court, and I probably still wasn't charging enough then because you got to. Uh, anyway, um, now I'm well. I don't really do pet portraits anymore because I. I just don't really find them fun. But now when I I sell originals, I really think about how long did it take? Do I want to charge myself minimum wage or do I want to be a bit kinder to myself? Um, It's just like thinking about that. And also you've got to think about the cost of materials and if you're you're really attached to that piece. So um, so we talked about undervaluing and underpricing and you talked about that with your commissions. Are you prepared, like, when it's time to do freelancing work, are you prepared to um, kind of negotiate and properly charge for freelance clients and, like, kind of higher-end working? Um, well, they've been they've been trying to prepare us a bit at uni. We have a lot of lessons, like, teaching us, like, how much you should actually get for a job. I remember, oh, I can't quite remember all the numbers, but it's, like, if you're doing a book wow. cover, you should be getting paid at least this, like, between these ranges. If you're doing an editorial piece, depending on this, you should be getting That's paid awesome. between this and this. Like, they went really in-depth on all of it. So that was That's a massive awesome. help. Um, and they, like, sort you out with, like, all the, um, like, the sort of, I don't know, legal forms, what they called. I forgot the things that you have to sign. I don't know what they're like contracts and stuff. Contracts, yeah. And like they the NDAs and stuff, like, yeah. yeah. What contracts to send people, like red flags, if a company says this, like don't work with them. It's, and wow. um, like make, just telling you like, you want to make sure you always have co- like the copyright to your own work. And um, so they've like helped you out, like helped me out loads. They've got yeah. a big list of how much to charge for everything. So yeah, I think I'll just like follow what they've said. Like if it's like a, you know, a proper legitimate like company they you like you know pay artists a lot they should like they yeah. they know all this stuff so they'll know that i know if they're charging me the right amount or not but right. i don't know i've not i've not been in that situation yet so we'll yeah. see well good luck when it happens <laughs> and it's awesome, awesome that, that your art school yeah, yeah that your art school is just like giving you all those resources that's amazing i didn't expect yeah. that that's really cool like exact yeah, numbers. that I took in college were not like that oh. <laughs> i wish they had that would have been awesome they do a lot of um, preparing us for real world and um, yeah. that was like all last yeah. year was like this is how how it should be like also just little things like how you pay taxes when you freelance things like that like making mm-hmm. sure we know all that stuff that's really I, I was kind of expecting that information to be just fully gate kept like no one is allowed to know this information so I wasn't expecting oh, I mean, it just straight like, up be taught there are handbooks there's like an industry standard like book um, that's like the illustrators or whatever guide to like pricing or whatever and it's like an industry standard like book that's updated every couple of years oh did you oh. not know this yeah yeah it's, I've it's never a good heard book. of that you should pick it wow. up yeah it's it's a good one yeah it's a staple okay so that was really like the the bulk of our questions do you have questions that you want to ask us as long as we're here I mean we'd love to like answer whatever you want to throw at us oh I should have been prepared oh no you put me on the spot <laughs> or do you have any topics you want to talk about or like tea yeah. you want to spill <laughs> hot takes how was it for you Kelsey just seeing because I remember 
I don't know if you might not remember this, I don't know you, but you was doing a live stream. Um, oh and yeah, I, and then you popped and, in. That was yeah, great, I remember I that. When, I don't know how many, you might have had like maybe 5,000 subscribers at that point, because I remember finding you yeah. thinking, ooh, who is this little channel? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I really like these and I would watch, I would watch your live streams a lot because I just like the they just found them really calming um, yeah and I remember commenting saying hi and then you were like um, I remember you just being like really nice and surprised that I popped up and now and then like I remember just a few weeks later saying oh she's got quite a lot of followers in, in quite a short space of time and then I'd look back again it's like oh my god she's at 50,000 dear flip it in it and then a few more <laughs> weeks passed by I'm like oh my god she, her channel is blown up I bet she's forgotten <laughs> about me now <laughs> Yeah. Um, what was that like? Because no, I, remember, I, I remember that live stream too. Yeah, I, I like I vividly remember that live stream. I was like at my desk, like my little New York City apartment, and I was like, "Oh my god, Art with M just dropped into my live stream." <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember like texting Al about it too because we had started the podcast at that point, and I was like, yeah. really I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> like I need to like tell you all about this, but yeah, it was really overwhelming like I still consider myself very much like an intermediate kind of beginner like like you I kind of feel like maybe I don't have the skills to like label myself as an artist or something yet because there are so many people that like I look at them and I'm like you deserve this audience way more than I do like you're so much better than me and I think it's really because I talked about like business and like marketing stuff on my channel and that's the big reason like why I started growing a lot it was definitely overwhelming I really know how to feel about it I spent a lot of days just like really in my head being like unable to record videos like thinking that there was like so so much like increased stakes on whatever I made at that point and then also just like the percentage of hate comments like stays the same but like when you're getting more comments overall it feels like that percentage is getting bigger and that was hard to deal with too I had to like separate myself from my audience a little bit and it's like especially on YouTube and like focus more on my discord server where people just like pop in and like chat with me one-on-one -on -one and like make that the place that I went to like interface with the community that I suddenly found myself building but no, it was it was overwhelming. And like I moved across the country from New York City to California, literally across the US, like midway through that big growth spurt. And I just like I'm kind of just like riding the wave. I don't really know what to do. I'm just like keeping continuing to post videos, I guess. Right now I'm like on a like a string of videos that are kind of doing poorly, but I kind of wanted that to happen. Like I wanted to self-sabotage a little bit so I could like lower the stakes again and like feel like that motivation to make good stuff. So it was um it was overwhelming for sure. Yeah, yeah I don't I really I, I don't really your, know what um, I did. I watched a video where you was like talking about how you how much time it takes to make videos and all like the boring admin stuff behind art. Um, you yeah. wasn't even though you was now like kind of a full time artist, you weren't making as much art as you was back when you weren't really a full time artist. Um Yeah. And how you wanted to just start making videos more about making art and I was like, Oh yeah, go on, Cassie. Yeah. <laughs> you go for it. <laughs> Because they're the sort of videos I love. I was like, oh, Kelsey's making uh, more art sort of videos. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Exciting. And I really want to do more of that stuff. It's just like, I don't know. Like, I, I'm making, like, comfortable enough money now that I can kind of, like, sacrifice some, you know, a little bit of AdSense money in favor of just, like, making the videos that I really want to make. And I recently i am about to sign a deal with Squarespace. So they're, like, sponsoring the rest of the year, basically, for my channel, which is That's really cool. Like, they're sponsoring, like, two videos a month, which is, like, about what I upload, honestly, for the next, like, three months until until the end of December so that's really cool and that's gonna kind of like give me the space that I need I think to make more art focused videos and I still want to like post like the business stuff I just want there to be again like like you were talking about really like more of like a balance between like where I'm getting my money from and like how I actually feel about my income stream so yeah <laughs> It's uh, very much just like figuring things out as I go. I don't really have a really concrete plan. I'm just kind of like vibing, I guess. How do you go about getting like the, the sponsorships? Do you like, email them or do you just wait for them to email you? They just email me, yeah. There's a really good Discord server called Partnered YouTube where like if you're monetized on YouTube, you can join this Discord server. I can send you a link to it. And they really help you like navigate like interacting with sponsors. They can like be like, hey, like does anyone have the email contact for Squarespace? I would love to react to them and then like send it to you and then they'll help you like negotiate and stuff and that's really how I learned the fair prices to charge because it's hard to find that specific yeah. um, number like they have there are tons of resources for like traditional illustration work like book covers and stuff but 
for social media sponsorships, it's more of a gray area and like really dependent on like the kind of value you want to bring, the goals of the company. But yeah, typically companies just reach out to me. I think it helps when you have the email like in your video descriptions and on your channel and like you like mention that you're open to sponsorships every so often. Sometimes I like will like talk about a company and I'll be like, they're not sponsoring this video, but, but they could. <laughs> they could. <laughs> If you want to reach out, let me know. And sometimes, like, actually, like, companies will, like, see that video. Presumably because they have a Google alert or something set up for, like, mentions of their brand and, like, the comments or whatever. And sometimes I, like, draw enough traffic to, like, their affiliate programs just mean that they'll reach out to me, so. It's definitely worth, if you're looking to, like, get sponsors, it's definitely worth emailing. And this yeah. hasn't worked for me, but I, I think it's still fun. Um, there's this, like, I use the Strathmore sketchbooks all the time. And so I made, like, this post literally begging them. I, like, was holding all of their sketchbooks. And I was like, please sponsor me. Dear Lord, please. And everyone in the comments was, like, tagging them. And they did not respond. It's fine. I'm not salty about it. But, you know, you can always try doing that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of a lot of brands, especially, like, with social media, because everyone can see that happening. Like, they like yeah. to interact with that kind of stuff and respond to that kind of stuff. So if you're looking to get sponsored, like, definitely, yeah. e like, you don't have to wait for them to email you. And also yeah. if they have affiliate programs, that works a lot. But, yeah, I get, like, sent a lot of stuff, but crossing over from just, like, showing a product in a video to then, like, getting a sponsorship. I'm still not quite crossed over to a sponsorship yet, but yeah. keep hoping. Yeah, because I did one sponsorship, and mm -hmm. I think I charged way too little <laughs> looking back. Mm. Because I, I when I actually started doing it, because I thought to myself, literally all I have to talk, do is talk about them for, what, two minutes? That would take me, like, an hour. So I thought, oh, yeah. But then I realised, no, this isn't taking an hour, because first off, I had to find a video, and then I had to mm -hmm. do all the back and forth emailing, and then editing it all together. It was like, I don't know, like, three, four-ish hours in the end. I was like, that's not worth my time. Yeah, I feel you. And one yeah. thing that's always really hard is, like, because I'll, I'll be telling my mom about like oh I don't know if I should take this deal I don't know if I should take this deal and if it'll be something kind of like in between of like I don't know if it's worth it I should be like well it's like $200 more than you had before and all you have to do is like post about it and I'd be like yeah and when you think about like traditional jobs or like an office job and, or like my part-time job at Michael's that I had where I was working for like $8 an hour or whatever like it like, feels fake yeah it feels like it wow feels that's like free money <laughs> <laughs> it literally feels like free money. So it can be like, in the, when you're early on, it's like so hard to know, like when you're first dealing with like money and stuff, it's so hard to know like what's normal. Cause like when you're so used to like getting paid really badly, it's like, no, this makes sense. This is a good amount of money, but it, it's not. <laughs> Other questions for us? Like we're just, we're, we're vibing now. I don't know. What's your favorite show? <laughs> I'm watching Ghost, BBC Ghost right now. Really? Obsessed. Oh my god, I'm so obsessed. I'm so excited for the new season to come out. New favorite show. Oh, wow. What I'm is it go. about? I haven't heard of this. Uh, do you know, like, Horrible Histories? The Horrible Histories gang? Yeah. It's like they all their masters. It's... Um, oh, okay. Horrible History. And it's like, um, they're living in this house. Well, they're all ghosts. And then they're living in the house with this other woman who can see them, but no one else can see them. And it's just the shenanigans that go on. It's so oh, good. Awesome. It's, it's like ultimate found family trope. Mm, mm. so good perfect <laughs> perfect i have been re-watching criminal minds um a classic but i really love severance it's on apple tv plus it's like a oh, i don't even know how to describe it it's like a like a workplace thriller what about you emily what's your favorite show right now i like yeah you, you light-hearted stuff I mean, I'm rewatching The Office, like the American one, for the, like, the tenth time at the moment. Just because it's just good background. Amazing. Um, yeah. Which I think, do you know, IT Crowd. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I love that show. Love. I used to work in IT. Well, I think that's a great place to end it. So, Emily, thank yeah. you so much for joining us. We had such a good time talking to you and getting to know you. We hope we can be art friends after this because, oh, like yeah, I said, definitely. we love your art. We love you. We had a great time. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And um, nice. for all of you listeners out there, uh, feel free to leave your comments below. Let us know who we should talk to next. Um, feel free to check out Emily's channel. Actually, do. Like, yeah, don't do check feel it out. free to. <laughs> do. Um, Go. Check and out we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.